here I am today. I am back at the Illinois and Michigan Canal. Uh, this is Stratton Park in Morris, Illinois. Uh, but as you can see, the canal is still frozen, although there is a little bit of water starting to appear. So perhaps not much longer and we'll be able to see water again. Here's a, a bridge that brings you into the park. And as you can see there, the uh, height clearance is probably about, I don't know, two feet. So no boats going underneath there, just the odd canoe. Let's take a walk up the canal and see what we can see. As you can see, uh, there's quite a lot of information on this canal, on uh, this board, about this canal I should say. And uh, it looks like it was built by from 1836 to 1848. As you can see, it's 96 miles long. And it was all dug by hand. A very very important canal in its day but unfortunately the river that runs next door to it was canalized and locks put in it which basically made this canal redundant but it's a shame it's a shame someone doesn't have the foresight that it could be one of the greatest tourist attractions in Illinois by uh, reopening it up to boats again such as the narrow boats of England would be fantastic on here and it could become a great leisure industry but unfortunately nobody seems to have the foresight to do this and it's just getting dilapidated more and more each year Not quite sure the camera's picking that up. That uh, in blue writing there says Illinois and Michigan Canal State Trail. They show a picture of a of a boat, a narrow boat, being pulled by mules. But yeah, it's not happening today. And of course, this is the activities one may do on here. You can see here. Obviously, the ice is still pretty thick. There's a couple of guys out here, standing on the canal, sawing up a tree. Yeah, not my idea of fun. This uh, embankment here, on the opposite side of the canal, is quite interesting in a way. Although you wouldn't think it today, but um, this was split into very small lots. Uh, there's some bigger houses here now today. There used to be tiny little houses on here, uh, very narrow, just sitting on very small plots. Uh, I believe these areas of well, these plots of land were given to some of the navvies for their work on digging the canal. Years ago, when I first moved here, there were still one or two of them left. But today, I've just walked along and it looks like they've all been demolished. A bit of a shame because they're definitely history of the canal. But no, no way to be seen. Well, I've now moved about four or five miles uh, east on the canal from Morris. Um, this is the first lock you come to going east from Morris. As you can see, um, it's not really a lock anymore, there's a concrete ward across where the uh, gates would have been. Uh, although I believe they can be 
lifted out. I believe they're concrete sections rather than actually a wall. And if I just zoom in here a little bit, you can actually see where the gates would have actually been fitted originally. And there, and the other one there. This uh, new metal bridge across the lock and all this uh, fencing they put around obviously is new. When I first came out here, none of this existed. Uh, I guess health and safety got involved and because as you approach locks and all are deep and etc etc uh, they put all this fencing up. As you can see the canal is still very frozen. Similar system to uh, all the small type of locks like this used across Europe, England and everywhere else. You have these uh, spy washers and this spy wash no different, it's still running. It's actually the only moving water I can see. Just a plaque here telling you what the lock is. And uh, I was kids having some fun back in the day. We don't want to see that on the canals now, do we? Yeah. I want to read it all. Press pause, please. I've now uh, moved down to the bottom of the lock. As you can see, the water trundling down from the bywash there. Unlike some of them in England, it looks like this comes down in the same directional flow as the canal. So it's not coming pounding in from one side, pushing your boat over. Uh, there's the entrance to the lock. See where the gate recesses are there, where they would have been. Uh, nothing at the bottom of the lock these days, just uh, an empty hole. This is as close as I can get to the lock because of this safety fence. Uh, I'm not going to climb over it. Uh, fines in Illinois can be huge for uh, doing things like that, so the last thing I want to do. Uh, but if you can hear water running in, that is because they do still have I'll walk up there in a moment and get a bit of a better shot of it. Water coming in from what would have been originally sluices, I guess, in the lock gate area. And here we are. This is the water coming in. There is actually a sluice I see there, but they can uh, adjust the amount of flow on that. And I can see it's only up about uh, half an inch at the moment. But um, there is a a paddle control behind. Very interesting. And as I say, uh, these are concrete gates, basically. And as you can see there, they're actually tied together like an iron uh, clamp. Yeah. Hopefully one day, they will take out this ugly concrete and uh, put in some beautiful oak wooden gates like they would have been years ago. A couple of points of interest. According to my GPS, we're 155.5 meters above sea level here at this lock. Well, I'm just gonna walk up now and uh, take a look over the aqueduct. Catch you in a second. Well, here I am now at the aqueducts. 
uh, job to get to it. I've got this wooden bridge up uh, and safety rails, etc. Stop me getting too close. But it's uh, just behind the aqueduct here. We have the old original bridge which uh, came along this roadway here next to the canal. Uh, that bridge is now just uh, terminus just here at the canal uh, and doesn't really go anywhere. But you can still drive over it to park up. I didn't park that side today, I parked this side on the new road. Here is the new bridge for the traffic. As you can see, much more modern. It's not very high here. Um, we're, what, 20 feet above the water level, I'm guessing. Nothing quite like the Ponty Sisidac Aqueduct in Wales. But uh, nothing much is. It's quite windy now, so I hope the sound's coming out okay. Uh, I forgot to plug my microphone in, so I'm recording directly off the uh, camcorder here at the moment. Here is the uh, aqueduct. I'm trying to hold my camera out as far as possible on my arm without falling in this icy cold water. Uh, but yeah, it looks like this bridge was steel. Uh, going by the way it was riveted together there. Not sure, but I assume it's a steel trough. Some I've been across here on the Illinois River are concrete troughs. I'm not sure if they're replacements. This here, of course, is the uh, original lock keeper's cottage. Fancy having that lovely house just to look after one lock. Because the next lock is miles away. Grand job, eh? Well, I've just moved about another mile and a half up the canal. Uh, let's see, it's very frozen still. Uh, this wide expanse here, I am told, used to be a loading wharf. I've no idea what was loaded here. I cannot find any more information about it online. Um, but uh, as you can see today, is completely surrounded by trees so uh, I don't know anyone knows let me know there is uh, that wide expanse and to get there I've just uh, walked underneath this quite low road bridge here Clarence six foot one. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, sure to where. Uh, sorry, clearance six feet. It says I'm not quite sure to where. I'm six foot tall, or just over six foot tall. And uh, let's see. Yep, I don't fit. <laughs> uh, I have to duck. So uh, yeah, six foot, perhaps to the water level. Uh, not to the towpath height. Well, that bridge, of course, that I've just walked under 
uh, is a fairly new bridge, as you can see uh, by its construction. Just pan around a bit. It's a bit of the noise of the cars coming around in the background. But here is part of the structure left of the original bridge, which actually looks like it's concrete as well. Uh, not sure it's all concrete, but definitely the base there looks very much like concrete. In the bushes here, I've just spotted these uh, great big slabs of rock, which have obviously been cut and faced at some time. So uh, perhaps it wasn't originally concrete all over. Uh, I'm guessing that this is the remnants of that bridge. Real nice pieces of uh, rock there. Well, I'm back at the car now. Uh, it's still quite a chilly day here today. I uh, just looked at my phone. It says it's 2 degrees uh, Celsius which is about 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to head off home. I was going to take you for a walk up in that direction and uh, go and show you one of the big river locks which is just up there. But it's about a mile walk each way and I'm getting cold and I think we're going to leave that for another day. I try and get some filming in of the river locks another day. I'm going to wrap this video up now. Well, this was going to be the end of the video. Uh, as I said, I was just going to wrap things up there. But I decided to have a beer on the way home. So I thought I'd add that in as well. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like, uh, subscribe, and I thank you all very much. Well, I stopped at Riverhawk Brewery in Shanahan, uh, and I got a pint of their English style mild, which is excellent. And if you look at the board here, look whom they named it after. So thank you very much for watching again. Uh, I'm going to enjoy this beer before I shoot off home.